taking you around and giving you the, 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 the tour. And my uh, lovely assistant, Ken, here, uh, will be there to uh, correct me when I make mistakes <laughs> and push me along if I need to push me along. Uh, we're going to start our tour at the top of this stand. This is called the Memorial Stand, and we'll explain all, all that to us. You're very welcome to the King Spanish now uh, called Home of Ulster Rugby. Ravenhill uh, was opened in 1924. Okay. It was bought uh, in 1923. The land was bought in 1923 for about £2,300, uh, 3, 3 shillings and sixpence or something like that. You can't know the exact date, uh, the exact amount. But six acres of land was, was bought to put up the, the rugby stadium. And we have an old stand, if you remember, here, and the rest of the three sides were cinder banks that people stood on. And up until 1954, international games were played here in Ravenhill. I think the last one was against Scotland. Um, uh, so we had 34,000 people in watching an international game. Does anyone care to suggest how many people we squeeze in there? We don't squeeze them because they're not all here. What was that? 16, Close 16. enough. 18,198. 18,198 is our, our, our set capacity to do with the uh, formula that the, the council set up. Someone asked about the seats. Seats. The colour of the seats are because of the colour of the... Exactly. It's the colours of the club. And the reason, again, I was talking to somebody about the, the, why they're sort of haphazardly set out. I mean, there are, there are no big... There are big rows of whites and reds, but they're all over the place. It's an Australian thing. Australia came up with this idea, uh, science in Australia came up with this idea that it's, uh, it tricks the eye when the camera's going round the stadium that you can't see an empty seat. Uh, we're, as I say, we're in the memorial stand. It gets its name from the Memorial Arch, more of which we'll talk about uh, on our tour. And also, the memorial stand contains the Nevin Spence Centre. Again, we'll talk about Nevin Spence uh, on our tour. Premier seats, often people ask how much they are. If you were to take a premier seat in the middle for the season, it would cost you 1,200 quid. Seats further out from the, the middle, near the end here, are about 700 for the season. Corporate boxes, there are 20 corporate boxes, although the last one is taken or was taken up by the BBC for their studio. Alas, no longer. We've lost the rights. But each company has, has taken a corporate box and they advertise their their company on the on the front there, and they're about twenty thousand a year. The corporate boxes you get fourteen people in a corporate box. The firms on a match night would bring people in, uh, do a wee bit of entertainment, get a, do a wee bit of business and so on, that sort of thing, uh, on a match night. Piece of art work here uh, in front of us. Right. It consists of a red timeline, which gives important dates in uh, rugby and Ulster, and also. Uh, sculptures, yes. uh, stainless steel sculptures. 1875, the Ulster Schools Cup was first played for. Uh, that was the final. Um, that is the second oldest tournament in rugby tournament in the world. The oldest tournament is called the Hospital Cup, and it's play, uh, played in, in for by hospitals around London. What does he try to point out in this part of the sculpture? Rusty. Got a nice day. You better keep moving when you do more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. What do we need? Play a game? Two teams. Two teams, thank you! Yeah, right. And so, that's to show they've got two teams. You're two teams. And what we have here is we've got a five side pitch, we've got a Gaelic and a football pitch going across here. Uh, basketball court across there. And then, for the rugby purposes, we have a half size rugby pitch coming <laughs> towards us. Okay. And the dimensions of that. Obviously, you couldn't play a game of rugby on it, but the dimensions there are the same as the dimensions out on the pitch. When they're playing, if you notice, they have a little box yeah. set in the back of their jerseys. And that's called a GPS system, Global <laughs> Positioning System. And uh, a bit like a, a sat nav, mm -hmm. picks up things uh, where the players are, are standing on the pitch. It'll also tell them, tell someone you know, who's watching their, their, their uh, signals coming from the GPS their heart rate, how they're breathing, where they're running, how far they're running, how hard they're running, uh, how hard they're hitting in the tackle, how hard they're being hit in the tackle. <coughs> uh, there's about 50 different pieces of information that the GPS system can pick up. 
And these little, this little black box looks like a speaker. Mm -hmm. That's an, an antennae, and that's picking up the signals from the GPS system, and it's sending them over to the Kingspan uh, glass box over there. And there's a chap in there with a computer, and he's getting all the messages from the players' GPS systems. Now, if you get 50 pieces of information from 15 players, that's 750 pieces of information every second, more or less, which that guy's her and Steve would be coming out of his ears. <laughs> You know, he couldn't handle that sort of thing, nor could a computer. So, uh, he only takes about 10 different measurements. So we're in a minute, it's called the foyer. There it is. Uh, busy, busy place on much day or night. Uh, he men and out. And in here would be where the press would do their interviews. That sort of thing. Uh, uh, before and after the game. We also have the, the buggy here. Uh, the electric buggy, which we hope you never have to use. I think it goes on and takes, brings off the engine. Don't be in control room. The uh, the game, professional game, they have to be tested for performance enhancing drugs. So uh, the International Rugby Board, the IRB, would send along people to the match and they would take a couple of people from each team and they'd have to go in there and provide sample. <laughs> and uh, here we have. Uh, Medical room, just like a, an emergency room. Guys who come in to get stitched or uh, oh, the way we're going to go in the away changing room. First. It's not a great room for communication, but it's meant to be like that. Because remember, the team that are coming in here are the team we're playing out on the pitch. So we want to get a bit of an advantage, as, as much of an advantage as possible. They have 23 pretty hefty guys sitting around here, two spare. In case somebody breaks a nail and can't go on. <laughs> um, you've got the manager, you've got the, the defence coach, the attack coach, the doctor, the masseur, the physio, blah, blah, blah. All packed into here. So it's cosy, but not too comfortable. Cosy. And it's meant to be like that. Uh, having said that, this is a bigger room than most of the rooms that our guys go to to change into. I remember in 2007, it was not that long ago, uh, we had the Junior World Cup being played here. And I had to get ice baths set up for the two teams. And we used wheelie, wheelie bins. Yeah. Wheelie bins with water and ice in them. And that was our ice bath. One guy got in, then he got out, and the other one got in. And that was our ice bath. So this is a big improvement on a wheelie bin. But we have a better ice bath. This is a great room for communication, circular, oval. So I, everybody sees me as I'm talking. And when the players want to speak up and so on, everybody can see who's talking about. So it's a great, great room uh, for communication. And obviously, the home dressing room, that's what it's supposed to be. And so what, what's the idea of the, key, the TV? Analysis or Yes, they watch, they might say, you know, what happened there, that line out, they, they show a bit of the, the, the match and try and do a wee bit of analysis at half time. How often it's used, I don't know. We're going to walk through the chores. As I say to the children, the chores work. You don't have to try them out. <laughs> but you can double your fingers into the first bath, which is the ice bath. The second one used to be an ice bath, but they now turn into a hot tub. So instead of going into the showers, they now go in. That's a hot tub. Oh, it is. Nice. We have seats up here. We have uh, volunteers which sit on them and give an audio visual commentary. Uh, we've had uh, people who are partially sighted or blind come to the games uh, in the old stadium. They would be here just to get the atmosphere of the crowd shouting and so on, uh, but not really know what's going on in the pitch. But now they can pick up a set of uh, earphones in the uh, office for the match, <laughs> and then someone gave them a running commentary of what's going on in the pitch. Uh, in 1914, when the First World War broke out, the uh, Ireland was all one, and the, the guys from the rugby clubs, players and officials, went off to fight in what they called the Great War. There's nothing great about it, but they went off to fight, 
and unfortunately quite a few didn't come back. So the IRFU, the Irish Football, Football Union in Dublin, wanted to make a, a memorial to their, their sacrifice. Want to put a, a memorial to their sacrifice. They asked all the clubs around Ireland to donate towards putting up a memorial. And by the time the money came in and so on and ready to start, uh, it was to go up in Lansdowne Road, as it was now at the Aviva Stadium. Um, the, out, the troubles had broken off in, out in, in, uh, in Dublin, the partition and so on. And so they decided it was, uh, wasn't the right place to put their memorial. And so they, they held off putting up a memorial until the, the, the next stadium was built, which was us, in 1924. And that's how we got the memorial arch for the, the, uh, the, the sacrifice of the rugby uh, family in the First World War. I'm not going to lead you around it. It's, it's a free time here. You just go and look what you want to look at. The first part here is a bit about the history of rugby in, in, in Ulster and a bit about, about Nevin Spence himself. Um, so there's all various things to look at, various things to try out. Then we go through a, a corridor into what they call the changing area, which does a wee bit about uh, the British Lions, about nutrition and rugby. You can pick your, your own particular star team uh, from, from down the ages. Um, then there's an interactive bit where the kids love kicking balls at uh, the, the, the wall, and try, and, try and convert uh, things or be tackled and so on, or try and tackle teams do reaction times, there's all that sort of thing. We bit about trophies. There's actually a trophy that Charmond D. Neal, uh, the jeweller, uh, uh, created. And then there's a wee bit about the Ladies World Cup. But you just feel free to go up and down. Thank and if there's anything that you need, you know, we want to ask, you can ask away. Thanks. And I can't guarantee you'll answer it. But... Scotland down beat the Chapman tries around the back he doesn't find touch and the ball is safely there. One touchdown already to his credit, Motel is off again. Down he goes, Scotland's <laughs> He said you made a bit of mess. That was a goal. Yeah, football. Oh, the kickers really nailed that.